This is Morgan Hazelwood, back again with more writing tips and writerly musings. I know most of you following me are already writers, but some of you only dabble and a few of you have only entertained the notion from time to time. And while it is a lot of work and dedication and persistence to write a manuscript, there are things you can do to make it a little bit easier. Welcome back to Morgan's Writing Tips and Writerly Musings with writing tips from the pros and, of course, my own writerly musings. I'm your host, Morgan Hazelwood, and today I'm here with my favorite tools for starting a novel. Now, these are the tools that I personally use to write my novels. Tool number one, NaNoWriMo. As we head toward November, many writers are getting ready for National Novel Writing Month, otherwise known as NaNoWriMo. Yes, it's RIMO because it's writing. It's where we pledge to write 50,000 words or 200 pages in 30 days. Some people are sticklers and start with page one of a new manuscript right after the clock strikes midnight after Halloween. Others aim for smaller goals or finishing partial manuscripts or working on editing a story that they've already drafted. Rebels are just as big a part of NaNoWriMo as the purists. While it's not for everyone, a lot of writers have found the community aspect very supportive. Others have found that it brings out their competitive streak. And still others have found that the speed gets them to turn off their internal editor long enough to actually finish what they've started. Now, for me, I find that I'm competitive with my past self and my local NaNoWriMo group is super supportive and welcoming. So I've quote unquote won like nine times. And I've drafted the majority of my five and a half manuscripts during NaNoWriMo. Although I've also spent more than one NaNoWriMo rewriting a project from a previous year. So tool number two that I use is outlining. There's a lot of different techniques for that. There's Snowflake or Trello or Beat Sheets and more. But while some people write entirely as the mood takes them, and that's fine, a lot of writers want at least a direction. And all of these outlines can be as high level or as detailed as you want. There's the snowflake method where you start with a one sentence pitch of your story and you expand it to talk about the setting and the main character. And then you describe the main character's backstory. And then you just slowly build out from each thing like a snowflake. Um, another technique for outlining are post-its or Trello or Kanban boards. This is where you have a single sentence for each scene or character arc, and you put them up on the wall or the virtual board in columns, building your scenes and your acts and your story, and you can move them around, you can add things, you can remove things until you're happy with the whole setup. Yet again, you can be as high level or as detailed as you want. Maybe there's five uh, post-its. Maybe there's 250. Trello and other Kanban boards are tools from the project management world, but many writers have found them very useful and they can be used just like the post-its, only in the virtual world. Another way to do outlining are beat sheets taken from script writers and used for novelists who follow the three or four act structure. These guides help you sort out the pacing for your story from where the inciting incident should be to the all hope is lost moment. Uh, these help keep the tension up so readers will find your story fulfilling. So while Save the Cat is probably the most popular beat sheet, Jamie with an I, Gold, has a collection I like to peruse uh, 
And that's how I create my high-level outlines that I promptly ignore. There are a bunch of other tools for outlining from Scrivener to Storyboard. Do you have any that I missed? Put them in the comments below and see if anybody finds it helpful. Uh, the third tool I use is music. Whether you find music in and of itself inspirational, uh, maybe you like to feel like you're writing a movie with a soundtrack blasting, or music just gives you a vibe that you can translate into your story, there are all sorts of ways you can use music to help your writing. Now, some people have carefully crafted playlists for each character and scene. I simply take a seed song or artist and let Pandora or Spotify or YouTube just roll with it. The fourth tool I use is mood boards. Whether you're an artist drawing your own characters and worlds or just browsing the internet, or if you don't mind the moral implications, playing with the AI creation tools, the mood board can be super helpful. Recently, I've been playing with Hero Forge's D&D model designer to create my characters in 3D. But in the past, I've also Google image searched and played with the website This Person Does Not Exist. Note, do not just go to social media and browse locked bios until you find a person who looks right. There's a difference between a person who puts their face as their brand out there, like actors and models and influencers, um, and somebody trying to make sure that their grandmother is following the right Jane Smith, you know? I typically find pictures for my main and my secondary characters, uh, the type of clothing they wear, and the setting. And then I pen them on Pinterest. Some people like to create a single collage with all those images, and others save them to a folder to browse. Whatever works for you. I also like to create a faux book cover for my NaNoWriMo project. I pop into Canva. It's a free graphic design tool that makes it easy for non-graphic artists. Um, and I use one of their book cover templates. And then I just play around and switch out backgrounds and colors and fonts until I'm happy. Uh, the fifth tool I use are lists. First off, names. If you are anything like me, names can take you hours or months to get right. One of the things I like to do is to create a list of at least 25 names that fit my setting before I start drafting, especially for like secondary and background characters. You can make them up. You can steal them from TV credits. You can look through baby name books or hit sites like Behind the Name or Fantasy Name Generator. Some people like to take real names and change a letter or two. One thing to remember is that readers are easily confused. They confuse characters whose names start with the same letter, characters whose names end with the same sounds, or characters whose names are all the same length. Vary those three factors whenever possible. Oh, and that advice also applies to places and fantasy or alien or sci-fi objects too. Any word that's made up. One time, I didn't have a list of names, and I was fast drafting like 75,000 words in a month, and I ended up using placeholder names like Alice, Bob, and Carol in my fantasy world, fighting Canadia. I still haven't edited that rough draft, although for more reasons than just that. Another thing I like to have a list of is Adjectives. When creating characters, especially background characters, it can be easy to end up with a character, quote unquote, straight out of central casting. You can probably picture the stereotypical banker dude or the barista chick. 
But the world is full of nuances. One way to switch it up, I stole wholeheartedly from a workshop with Joe Walton. Uh, Put together a huge collection of adjectives that could describe different characters, and then pick three at random and let those adjectives describe a single character. For my gamer friends, you can always just have a chart and roll a die. Uh, I have some charts. Hopefully, I've linked them properly below. In fact, if you're stuck on a story idea, I've got a whole series of charts I did as like a meme thing uh, with who, what, and where. Check out the links. Uh, The sixth tool I use is an opening line. I know, I know, for NaNoWriMo especially, you're supposed to start with a blank sheet of paper. But until I have that opening line that captures the point of view and the character's voice and compels the story forward, I don't feel ready. I don't feel comfortable writing the story. Um, That's what sets the mood for me. It sets the tone. It shows me that I know who my character is. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be stable enough of a starting point to launch from. I often edit it later, and sometimes it's completely dropped. But you've got to start somewhere. Uh, The seventh thing I tool I use are rituals. Now, you can be as spiritual or as formulaic about this as you want. Even if this sounds a little too woo for you, if you get into a set of habits, you can trigger your brain into this is what we do before we write mode without you having to force it. Um, Despite the standard connotation, rituals don't have to be long and complicated and whatever. Rituals can be as simple as using a commute or a walk or a shower to clear your head and contemplate what happens next in your story. Um, You can use music or playlists to get in the mood. You can have a location like a favored chair or a coffee shop or a room with a door to get ready. Um, You can treat yourself with a favored tea or a snack, that kind of thing. You could light a candle or incense. You could meditate, or you could just close the door to the bathroom where the family shouldn't bother you for at least 15 minutes, but you never know. Whatever ritual works for you. For me, I like to sit down with two cups of water and three chocolate truffles. And then I tell myself I can't take a break until I've drunk both cups of water. But I get a truffle every 500 words. And the final tool I use are writing sprints. Now, some people just sit down and the words flow out of their fingers. Some people wake up early to write before work, seeing what they can fit into an hour and a half. Others wait until the world is asleep and do their writing then. No matter when I do my writing, these days, I do it in sprints. I set a timer between 20 and 25 minutes, usually for 23 minutes this year because I'm easily amused and it's 2023. Um, And then I try to do nothing but write until the timer goes off. In between sprints, I'll chat with people, I'll check my socials, I might even do some research for my writing, might. Sometimes I use an on-screen timer, Uh, sometimes I use a Sprinto bot in a Discord server, it's a chat application my NaNoWriMo group uses, and many other (laughs) groups. While it can be a competition, I usually only compete with myself. I know I can usually crank out between 300 and 500 words in a sprint. Sometimes I crank out seven words. A few times I've hit like 730 words. And then after the sprint, once my water's refilled and my brain's refocused, I dive back in and do another sprint. For the last five NaNoWriMo's, probably 90% of my words were written using writing sprints. I'm not sure if it's a way to 
focus my ADHD brain, or maybe it's just knowing I'm going to get a break makes it easier to push myself, but I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to keep using sprints for as long as they keep working for me. Now, some people do like 10, 15 minute sprints, but I find that a little too short and it stops me right when the words really start flowing. Uh, Some people do half hour or longer sprints, but those start to feel more like a marathon for me. And about the 25 minute mark, checking my notifications starts to be a little too distracting or needing a snack or a bio break. But if you find a pace that works for you, use it. Note, when I'm editing, I do need longer stretches to really hit my stride. Reading is longer chunks for me. Fun fact, I actually run writing sprints year-round on Sundays from 4.30 to 6.30 Eastern Time on YouTube and Twitch. So this might actually be the tip I use the most consistently, um, even if I'm not always writing during it. Are there any other tools you use to prepare to write? And that's all for today. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that subscribe button and share it with all your friends. It goes a long way towards helping people find me. And I'll be back again next Monday with more writing tips and writerly musings. Bye-bye.